Who, when, and how much should you tip while on safari? These are questions I get asked all the time, which is why in today's video I want to address these questions and share some tipping insights and guidelines with you. This is all meant to get you more prepared for your upcoming safari trip. But before we get into it, opening sequence. Hello everyone, welcome back for an all new Safari Insights video. My name is Jeff Heyer, I'm a Safari Travel Advisor, which means I can arrange an itinerary for you anywhere in Africa. I work with a wide network of trusted tour operators and hospitality brands that I know and have vetted so that I can curate you the best of the best when it comes to safaris. If you're at the beginning stages of planning your trip, I'd love to help you plan and book your safari. To contact me, all you have to do is fill out the Safari Inquiry form, which I have linked in the description below. I can't wait to receive your inquiry and help you arrange your trip. Now, whether you booked your trip through me or someone else, this video applies to everyone who's planning to go on safari in the near future. I'm talking about places like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, South Africa, where be it. Some questions I get asked all the time are, should I tip on safari? Who exactly do I tip? How much do I tip? What's considered too much, too little? Jeff, just explain to me what's going on so I can plan ahead. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some tipping insights and guidelines. This will help you make a cash plan and feel more prepared for your safari. I don't want you to ever feel confused or uncomfortable when it comes to tipping. Sometimes you might be in an awkward situation where you're thinking, do I give them cash or do I not? So let me explain what's going on. I'm gonna start by saying that tipping is not mandatory. Of course not, no one's gonna force you to pay extra. But in the safari industry, tipping is very common and customary. And I always encourage travelers to tip those who provide you with wonderful service and hospitality. It's a way to show your appreciation and support local people. You'll enjoy your experience even more knowing you're leaving a positive impact and impression by tipping. Now the first question is, what do I tip? Like which currency exactly? Is foreign currency okay? Yes it is. Now the best thing you can do is tip in the local currency in the destination you are visiting. The next best thing you can do is tip in US currency. USD is widely accepted and common in most areas of Africa. In fact, you'll see USD amounts listed in many places on the tourist trail. Now after tipping in local currency and then USD, the next best thing you could do is tip in another foreign currency. I'm talking about currencies like euros, British pounds, and Canadian dollars, so on and so forth. Workers in the tourism industry are used to exchanging these currencies. They will happily accept any form of currency if you don't have local bills or USD. Now, if you are using foreign currency, just make sure the bills that you're giving out aren't too old and tattered. Some places will ask, do you have bills that are printed after the year 2014? So something printed within the last 10 years? They prefer this because older, more tattered bills are oftentimes more difficult to exchange at banks and exchange offices. So I recommend bringing the crispest, freshest bills that you can get. The next big questions are who do I tip and how much do I tip them? I'm gonna break down the different categories and share my insights on each. Let's start with the big one, safari guides. In many ways, the guide of your trip is an integral part of your overall experience. Many people will have the same guide with them for the entirety of their trip. They'll pick you up at the airport and drop you off before you go home. They're your personal guide, driver, and educator. They tell you about wildlife, local culture, everything about the destination you're exploring. They're a very valuable local resource. This is why it's very important to leave a token of appreciation for them after your time together. When you say goodbye to your guide at the end of your trip, it's highly encouraged you hand over cash based on how many days you spent with them. A general tipping guideline that I follow is to leave about 10 to 20 US dollars for your guide per person per day. For example, if you're a group of four who had the same guide for seven days, if you do the math, I'd recommend leaving around 280 US dollars on the low end and up to 560 US dollars on the highest end. The amount you give in this range is really up to your discretion. It depends on your means and how much you really think they enhanced your experience. I will say I always try to be as generous as possible. If there are a lot of people in your group, let's say six, the daily amount per person can go down a tad, which should make sense to you because there's more people contributing to the overall tip. The next category I'm gonna cover is hospitality staff. I'm talking about people like hotel servers, porters, housekeepers, chefs, and more. When you check into safari lodges, there are a lot of people there to serve you. 
Staff members will carry your bags to your room, the chef is cooking your orders, you'll often have a server for all your meals, a bartender ready to make you drinks, a housekeeper is tending to your room, you might even have a butler at the higher end properties. You add it all up, there's a lot of people involved. This might seem a little overwhelming because you might feel like you have to tip every individual. Don't worry, you don't necessarily have to tip everyone out separately. Nine times out of 10, you will find a staff tipping box in the reception where you can slip in some cash at the end of your stay. This tip pool benefits everyone. This is great because there are so many staff members you might not even interact with directly that are working behind the scenes for you, especially kitchen staff, security guards, etc. Now, if you wanna keep things simple, you're absolutely welcome to just leave one tip in this tip box at the end of your stay. Now, if you're someone like me, I do like to give a small bonus to certain people that I see directly, like the porters that carry my luggage to the room or the server that I have for the entire duration of my stay. But this is absolutely not obligatory, and in my experience, no one's ever going to be upset that they didn't get anything from you. If you feel pressure to hand over cash directly to, let's say, the porters who carried your bags to your room, you can slip them a few bills if you want, or you can tell them when they're finished with the task, you can look at them and say, I appreciate your help. I'm gonna be leaving something in the staff tipping box at the end of my stay. Or you could say, I'm leaving something extra for you at reception. In my experience, they will be 100% happy with that and will gladly thank you. This is actually advice I took from my colleague who's worked in the safari industry based in East Africa for 20 plus years. Oftentimes I will leave a few extra bills in the room for the housekeeper when I check out and at the dining table at the end of our last meal for the server. Something small, something sweet, because usually you grow a close friendship with them depending on the length of your stay. But again, if you don't want to, you can keep it simple and leave one single tip in the box at the end of your stay for everyone. The next category I'm gonna cover are porters and trekking guides. If you plan to see things like gorillas or chimpanzees in Uganda or Rwanda, I wanna address the gratuity guidelines here so you can be most ready when you embark on your hike. And this is because there's a lot of key players involved in these kinds of experiences. When you go on these excursions, there's always one guide who takes care of you, followed by two security personnel to keep you safe. These people sandwich the group. One person leads and the other lingers behind so you're most safe in the middle of the pack. Then there's also a group of trackers who leave before you to locate the animals you're hoping to see. These are the ones who wake up hyper early to track the wildlife. Maybe in your case, it's a gorilla family. These trackers, when they find the wildlife, then communicate with your guide who's with you so that the guide knows exactly where to take you next. It's a whole operation. Now the last person who might be in your entourage is a porter. It's common to hire a porter for these types of experiences to carry your belongings. This is optional, but highly recommended as these porters are there waiting each day, waiting to be hired, and it's a great way to support local people looking for work. The minimum price to hire a porter for the day in most places is around 20 USD. So again, there's a lot of characters involved with these types of experiences to make it smooth and safe. A guide, trackers, security personnel, and a porter if you choose to hire one. I recommend bringing cash with you that can be handed to each of these mentioned groups. For each traveler, I recommend having around 20 US dollars for the trackers that they will split amongst each other, 20 US dollars for the guide and security guards that they can share, and then something extra for the porter on top of the $20 minimum. Next in this video, I'm gonna go over community visits. If you decide to include cultural experiences on your safari itinerary, which I highly recommend, it's wise to have cash handy with you before these visits. Let's say you wanna visit a Maasai village outside the Serengeti. It's often that at the end of their tours, presentations or performances, that they will put out a tip box or gift items for sale. It's always nice to have cash ready for these scenarios in case you wanna buy something. If you don't wanna purchase any goods, which is one way to support them, it's good karma to leave a small donation for these people who just hosted and entertained you. On my most recent safari, I watched several performances from various community members, and pretty much all of them had set out a tip basket after their performances. This was the case for a group of students that were performing at our lodge in Rwanda. They gave a vibrant performance and at the end mentioned they're raising money for university supplies. I said, I'll totally donate to that, and I left some bills in their basket. Very welcome. Now I've gone over the main categories, but I just wanna mention a few other circumstances where you might wanna have cash ready for tipping. One example is that at several airports, especially the smaller airstrips that take tourists to the wildlife parks, 
there are porters waiting in the parking lots, ready to carry your luggage for you to the planes. You might at first think this is complimentary, but they always ask for a small contribution after the job is done. Just be aware that they might assist you before even asking first. Their services aren't always free and they may expect some cash from you at the end. Throughout your travels, you will find other people giving demonstrations of all kinds, and they're usually working for tips. An example would be at the equator crossing in Uganda on my recent trip. I've been there more than once and every time I visit there's always someone there waiting to explain or show you the equator phenomena at this site and they're hoping to educate and press you for something extra at the end. I just covered the main cases where tipping is recommended while on safari. To reiterate, Safari guides, wildlife trackers, hospitality staff, and local community members that welcome you into their cultures are the main people to support. These are the individuals that aim to provide you with an informative, safe, and memorable experience. So I encourage you to have a cash plan and be prepared to tip them if you have the means. The best thing you could do before your trip is to bring spare cash with you just in case. You don't need a ton, just have some bills ready in case you need to pull something quick. You might not even touch this supply because you'd rather withdraw local currency from an ATM. Whatever works for you, I hope this video helped you prepare in creating a little bit of a tipping budget. Helped you know how much you might want to withdraw on the local currency or how much cash you want to take with you from home. By the way, guides are very used to stopping at banks and ATMs for clients, so if you ask them to stop to get cash, it's never a problem. If you're like me, I like to minimize my trips to the ATM, so I'll follow these tipping guidelines so I can estimate how much I'll need beforehand. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe. I really appreciate your support. If you wanna go on safari and you're at the beginning stages of planning your trip, please do reach out to me. And if you've already planned and booked your trip, I wish you the best and safe travels. I'll see you next time for more safari videos.